Welcome to the third video in Child Trend's six-part series on building evidence for effective programs. In this video, we'll introduce you to the third step of a five-step data-driven process to support the delivery of effective youth programs. Then we'll meet Maya, the director of an academic tutoring program at a youth-serving nonprofit organization. We'll check in with her to see how she and her team implemented step three. Before we learn about step three, let's review the entire process of building effective programs for youth. The basic idea is that you'll want to assess the needs and resources in your community, identify the needs to be targeted, create a plan, and then implement your plan to deliver your program and monitor its quality. Once your program is running smoothly, you might want to take that final step of conducting an evaluation. Keep in mind that while we present the steps as a linear process, it may not work that way for you. Because this is a journey of learning about your program, it's normal to revisit an earlier step from time to time to apply something you've learned in a later step. For a more detailed introduction to the full process, check out the first video in this series. Now, let's talk about step three. In this step, you'll develop a plan that describes how you will address the need you identified in steps one and two. To help guide your planning, you'll want to develop a theory of change and a logic model. Don't worry if you don't know what these things are. We'll go over a quick explanation in a moment. But in a nutshell, these documents are your roadmap as you build and improve your program. A theory of change is a brief description, usually just a sentence or two, that describes the short and long-term changes you hope youth in your program will achieve and how what your program does will help them achieve it. For example, when describing a mentoring and tutoring program, you might say, our program helps youth improve their grades and learn valuable skills that will help them graduate high school on time by pairing them with mentors for two years to receive academic tutoring and supports. A good theory of change answers these three questions. One, what do we want to change or have as the main outcome of the program? Two, what are we doing to achieve this change or outcome? Three, what are the changes we expect to see along the way? For the theory of change we saw earlier, the main outcome is an increased high school graduation rate. What the program is doing is offering a two-year mentoring and tutoring program. A change we expect to see along the way is improved grades. Now, let's take a look at logic models. A logic model is based on your theory of change and provides more details of how your program will achieve its goals. Let's review each of the components in a little more detail. Inputs are resources you'll need to run, manage, and sustain your program. For our mentoring example, these include mentors, staff, training, space to hold mentoring sessions, and funding. Program activities are the things your program plans to do. For our mentoring example, these would be mentoring sessions. They could also include things like recruitment of mentors or participants. If they were using an evidence-based program, they would describe it here. Outputs are things you can measure to assess program delivery. Outputs could be things like how many mentoring sessions youth actually attend or their satisfaction with their mentor. They can also measure fidelity, which is basically whether the program activities are being run as planned. Fidelity can be measured by having staff report on what parts of the program they actually did versus what they had planned to do, or by having someone observe an activity to see if it was done the way it was intended. Finally, we come to outcomes. Outcomes are the changes you expect to see in the youth as a result of their participation in your program. People often break this down to short-term and long-term outcomes. Thinking about our mentoring program, the short-term change in youth would be improved grades, and the long-term change would be high school graduation. Remember, things like program attendance are not outcomes because they aren't changes in youth. Rather, program attendance would be an output because it is a measure of program delivery. An outcome would be something like improved grades because that's a change you hope to see in youth. Check out the resource links on the webpage for guidance on developing your own theory of change and logic model. Because you are developing your roadmap during this step, it is important to include community members as well as program staff. 
They can help identify potential barriers to the activities you're planning and point out strengths of the target population and the broader community that you can use to support your work. They can also help to point out contextual factors that might influence program success. For example, if a similar program had been implemented unsuccessfully in the past, community members may be wary of your program. Knowing this ahead of time could lead you to select a different approach or plan for additional outreach activities. Now, let's check in on Maya. My name is Maya and I'm the director of a program that prepares middle school youth for success in high school by providing them with the same academic tutor for two years. We've been running the program for seven years, serving about a hundred youth each year across two schools. It's a great program and I'm always inspired by our youth and tutors. Recently, after I attended a workshop on program evaluation, we began a journey to improve our program. We started by working with community members to reassess the needs and resources in our community. Looking at district test scores, we learned that while scores had improved at our schools, the schools had not been as successful in helping Hispanic and African American students to achieve. We were hopeful that our program was helping to address that problem. However, after reviewing our data and having some discussions with parents and students in the program, we came to realize that we needed to do a better job meeting the needs of our African American and Hispanic students. Our team met a couple of days later to start thinking about ways to improve the program. Based on the conversations we had with students and parents, we learned that we needed to do a better job of making students feel supported. Of course, we also talked about the importance of analyzing data over time, especially by race, ethnicity, and gender, to understand how effective our program was for all groups of youth. We still believe that pairing middle school students with an academic tutor for two years would better prepare them for success in high school, but we revised our theory of change slightly to recognize the importance of making sure tutors develop supportive relationship with students in the program. Overall, we kept the same outcomes, but we added some new activities to our logic model. For example, we added training for tutors. We also look for ways to measure the quality of those activities, like feedback surveys for tutors and students. We were feeling good about our revised logic model and decided it was time to check back in with parents and students. For the most part, the students and parents agreed we were headed in the right direction, but they did have some suggestions. For example, some students suggested we plant some fun events for tutors and students to help them get to know one another better. Getting critical feedback was a little stressful, but it was clear to me that the feedback from parents and students was helping us to deal with potential challenges in advance, some of which we hadn't even thought of. Of course, now we had to actually implement our new plan. Let's look back at what Maya has accomplished so far on her journey to meet the needs of youth in her community. In steps one and two, working with the community, Maya and her team learned they needed to work on better meeting the needs of their students, especially African American and Latino students. In step three, they made changes to their theory of change and logic model to better reflect their focus on helping tutors and youth develop supportive relationships, with a focus on supporting the success of African American and Latino students. Throughout the process, Maya and her team continued to engage community members to ensure that the programming would be a good fit for the students and their families. Check out the resources links on the webpage for more about logic models, as well as links to databases of evidence-based programs for youth. To see what Maya and her team did to implement their new plan, check out video 4.